you're in for a real treat to uh, hear from one of the great American film producers uh, doing everything from Enchanted and Wild Wild West to um, television shows, as Sarah said, like, like Turn and Bones. So you're in for a treat and also just a really wonderful uh, philanthropist and um, you know has a wonderful family and is so great to tie into the School of Communication in so many different ways including, um, as you know, the LA intensive program. So I'm very thrilled to have um, Barry joining us today. I also want to um, just kind of give a shout out to the community that we have here assembled. And you know, I don't need to tell this crowd if you're um, you know, part of the SOC community that we do think of ourselves as media change makers in a changing world. And imagine um, for a moment what society would be like with everything that's going on right now, all of the challenges, you know, and my heart really goes out to everyone um, who's going through so much right now in so many different ways. Um, imagine going through that without the field of communications, you know, whether that's just, just the ability to reach people and engage with them and address issues through films or through games or the courage of journalists on the front lines dealing with things that are happening or strategic communication professionals, um, scholars who are trying to understand. I feel very, very proud uh, to be part of the School of Communication in this environment and always. And I uh, wanna thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Sarah and Nada, and especially Barry for uh, his generosity. His, you know, he's always generous with his time and we appreciate it every time. Thank you very much. So here we are a year later. What projects are moving forward and how has COVID-19 impacted how you are doing your work now? One thing I will say is I think that this industry has been affected tremendously by Zoom. Um, and I think at least in Los Angeles, where I've been experiencing the entertainment industry, all of us may start uh, continuing to use Google Chat or Zoom for a lot of meetings and interactions as opposed to you know, wasting an hour and a half or two hours in our cars, um, going to meetings that could be creatively put together on Zoom. I don't think anybody, the culture was not advanced enough to get to Zoom learning or Zoom communicating or Zoom meetings. Now it's become the way writer's rooms are operating. It's the way movies are prepping. It's the way all people are communicating. And as much as everybody wants to jump out there and get real contact again, I think that the efficiency of using Zoom is something that's going to be with us um, for quite a while. When you're pitching something on Zoom, maybe just bring with you some very strong visuals of what you're trying to convey. I think on Zoom, it should be more concise. Um, if you've hooked them, then they'll ask questions later and then you can fill in the narrative. One tip I'll tell you that I know this from being a buyer and a seller, uh, it really sucks when people say, but that'll come, well, I'll tell you more about that later. What's one thing that you wish you had known in the early stages of your career that you learned later that we could benefit from? When you set your goals, um, they should also be set on the clarity of what you feel your skill sets are, what you feel your strengths are, and then does it satisfy your passion? Sometimes you are latching on to different opportunities. And then at, at that point, it's great to think about how is this serving the journey that I see? How is this serving what I've laid out in front of me? Since graduating, I've been reading a lot of advice about um, how to sustain a career making your own independent film. The advice is to be trying to find the smallest niche audience possible. They will sustain your career for all the following films that you make. And it's something that the larger studios can't afford to do. You know, in terms of like creating a business plan for the idea of the independent smaller movie, um, that can be a business plan for sure, because you're gonna come across stories that major studios are not. I think what you're thinking about is something to consider as long as the talent that you're working with makes sense. Do you have any tips for maintaining um, creative inspiration in this time? 
So my advice to you is that most investigative journalists, most film producers and TV producers, most um, writers who are researching are going to hear no a lot, and you're going to run into bumps a lot. Um, and you have to just be able to be sanguine with the fact that that is what you're doing. Um, think about, you know, the great documentaries that you've seen. Um, you know, they are just filled with things being unlocked, you know, um, and you think about the persistence of certain um, documentary filmmakers. It's that persistence that unlocks the best narrative. When you're looking for things to adapt, what do you think makes it successful and why, why is it successful still today? Trusting that writer or that producer or that director or that person with a vision is the key to almost all entertainment. You know, it's, it's that sort of unique voice or that interesting, you know, those interesting characters that you find really compelling. How important is creativity to you in your process? And how do you use creativity when you're not the one shaping the story or narrative yourself? Creativity is sort of a, a wide term for everything that is the process of making film and TV. And when it's not generated by you, which 95% of the time it's not generated by me, the creativity is in the feedback and the shaping of it as it progresses. Each time with a project that I close my eyes or I move on to the next day, often I'll come back to it thinking, did I give all the best feedback in that moment? What was my creative input to progress that project? Everybody likes to talk about this golden age of television. Um, I really see it as the golden age of streaming. Um, it opens up everybody's ability to create uh, in such a different way. Uh, whereas before, um, really, it was so much more limited. Um, nothing is disposable. So, <clears throat> you know, I'd say I encourage you all to, you know, if there's an idea you believe in, sort of re wrestling it to the ground to make it work. Uh, because honestly, this industry now has changed and anybody can be a producer. Um, the whole idea of having to climb a ladder doesn't really exist the way it did before because <clears throat> we are all so desperate to find the new voice. So that's basically who you all are. You're the new voice that we're all sort of trying to connect with. Um, so I'd say just, you know, really believe in and finish those projects the best you can before you show them. Um, because often you only get one or two shots at that. So you want it to be in the best form it can be. Gary, thanks so much for being our guest today on LA Virtual Experience. Coming up next Tuesday, uh, July, June 9th at 3 p.m., Daryl Frank will be our guest. Putting this series together is really a team effort. Thanks to Nada Malouf, Concept and Outreach to Alumni, Felicia Parks, SOC Career Center, Hannah Shows for visual design, Olivia Hugestrat for alumni emails, Tia Millage, Brianna Williams, web promotion, Matt Seklecki, logistics support, Rebecca Castaneda, post-production editing, and our School of Communication, Dean Laura Donardis, staff and the faculty who champion innovation. I welcome your comments and suggestions for future guests and ways in which we can engage with you even further virtually with American University and the School of Communication. I'm Sarah Mankey-Fish. I thank you so much for being with us today.